Good morning. It's a uh, May long weekend time. It's Friday. Everybody's off work today. There's uh, four of us going into the park. Myself, Evan, Ryan, and our friend Cozy. Good morning, everyone. It is May 20th. It is Ryan's birthday. Ryan is now 30 years old. Just after seven o'clock in the morning, so we got a very early start. We hit the road this morning at 4 a.m. And uh, weather's good. Off and on rain throughout the weekend is what they're calling for, uh, but it's about 12 degrees and cloudy. No rain right now. We are at the Rock Lake access point again, which is uh, it's kind of crazy. We've been here more in the last uh, 18 months than we've ever been. So this trip we have buddy Dan. How's Dan, it going? Dan the man cozy. <laughs> Doesn't know what he's getting involved in yet. No, I'm excited. How excited? Very so excited. excited. Oh, you got a big one. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. A rock on rock lake. Ryan and I just pushed off and we are set and sail on the 2022 spring trip. Looks like the weather forecast is calling for some rain, but other than that, the temperatures are gonna be much warmer than some of our past trips. And uh, we've got four people, so Evan's not riding alone this time. So we're on Rock Lake now. Uh, we're obviously dealing with a bit of a headwind. No real white caps to speak of, but the waves are decent. Just hugging the west shore, uh, which we're going that way anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. And uh, we're plugging away, nice and sunny. It's not cool, not sorry, not warm, cool enough. And this breeze is actually good. I think it's going to keep the bugs down tonight. We've already managed to uh, open up a bit of a lead on the boys here, but once we stop at the pictographs, we're going to locate those again and meet up. And then we're on to the portage. So I don't know if you can see here through the trees, but there's, looks like a footing for an old cabin. And there's actually, I think three of them that I can see, one falling down. And we're just waiting for the slow pokes. Catch up. And then we're gonna swing the corner here and take a look at the pictograph rock. The wind has died down now that we're further south on the lake out of the main body. And it's turned into a gorgeous morning. So right in front of you there, right now. So I see the orange vertical? Look to the left of that and you see the red. See him, Ryan? You didn't see him last time. So last time we were here, um, as we were paddling down this rock and the fog was closing in, we lost sight of Ryan and Scott. And they, uh, now that there is no fog, they were paddling up in here and we lost them in the fog. And then they end up going down this bay, which is not where you want to go. You want to go in this direction here. But yeah, we, uh, we rounded the corner and we couldn't find them, so we had to call out in the fog. And pretty cool spot. Obviously right across from the rock, there's a campsite on this. I think it might be Rose Island, if memory serves. That, uh, that campsite right there is gorgeous. All right, so we're approaching the end of Rock Lake. You may not be able to hear it on camera, but you can start hearing the waterfall that's coming down from Penn Lake into Rock. I think it's called Penn Falls, to be honest. So we're, uh, shouldn't be too much longer here on rock. I think we're gonna fish the end of this lake here. The water levels are high, so the rapids and waterfalls should look pretty impressive today. So we'll go and show Dan that. And I think we're gonna try our luck and try and find the petroglyphs again. 
Ryan and I are racing to the portage right now. I told him we had to quit chatting and paddle because I am going to urinate in my pants. I had to pee since we were at the rock, looking at the pictographs on Rock Lake. I did go to the washroom twice before we left, but it hasn't made any difference. And this little bit of a paddle to the portage has seemed insurmountable because of how bad I have to go to the washroom. So I told Ryan, kick it into high gear. So he's paddling me as fast as he can. And uh, I remember this portage has got a rock entrance. So I'm probably just gonna jump out and leave Ryan stranded with the boat because my bladder is going to explode. A few other people out enjoying the park on the portage, see some bags and gear. Uh, looks like Evan and Cozy just paddled on by to fish the bottom of the rapids. I made Ryan pull in early, couldn't even make it to the portage because I got pee so bad. Looks like the, uh, the tree that had the portage sign on it didn't make it through the winter very well. I'm guessing that Evan just wanted to let these people make their way along the portage and then have us uh, slide in afterwards. So. Alright, so we're on our way to try and find the petroglyphs again. We just stashed our boats uh, and bags out of the way there. We just ran into another group. They're obviously fishing. We got quite a bit of gear. So we're just making sure no one, uh, we're not in the way of anyone as we're doing this. And hopefully the bugs aren't bad. Rich made a good point. It's kind of like finding a needle on a needle stack here and moss could be growing over the petroglyphs. So I think we might get skunked again, but we'll take a look at the waterfalls anyway and that'll be a nice consolation. This was the first portage on our last trip last year. It's not a very hard portage. Boardwalk past the spring. Waterfalls all on your left. Very gorgeous. We're going in quite heavy. Just finishing up the first portage here. Bit of a bit of a downhill. Um, and as you can see, the water is just as high as it was in the fall, which is good when we're in the Gallipo River Lakes area. We're going to need the water in the river so we're not to walk in the river. We're on a beautiful Penn Lake. How was the first portage of the year, Rich? Pretty good. This food bag is pretty heavy, but not too bad. And we packed a pretty heavy dinner for tonight. It'll be gone tomorrow. So, yeah. Dan Cozy, how was your first portage? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm into it. <laughs> that was an easy one. <laughs> I think the waves are going to be pretty bad on Penn, based on what we saw on Rock. about to come up to a section where there's two islands we're going to split the center of them we did this last time when you get to the end it looks almost as if you can't make it through to the larger body of water because of a bunch of rocks that are dotted across in between the two islands but there is a gap that's wide enough for a canoe to fit through on the left hand side uh, just be careful, there are some rocks that are sticking up. We got to the Narrows on Penn, and uh, we passed the campsite. And then Rich and Ryan were passing, and uh, someone on the campsite yelled out, Single malt! 
It was uh, somebody, I guess, watched our videos or uh, read stuff on the forum, trip logs and stuff. So we pulled around and we talked to Steve, nice guy. Nice to, nice to have a little chat with somebody that loves the park like we do. Uh, we're about halfway down Penn and we decided that we're gonna pull over on this nice beach. It's not a campsite, just a nice sandy point. We're gonna pull over, we're gonna have some lunch, hydrate a bit. Um, about halfway done the day, so it seemed like a good time to, to pull over and stand up. All right, we're all finished lunch. And you might be able to hear it. While we're eating there, the wind really kicked up. We got quite a bit of white caps now. We need to hang this corner and go off to the left. So we'll uh, inch our way around this point and make a decision. And uh, I'm sure we'll get to where we need to go, but a steady wind's fine, but those gusts, you know, if they turn you around, it, it happens quick. So we'll see what we see. We'll figure it out. Okay, we're on the island and that's the entrance there uh, to the Gallipo River and so we fought our way in the white caps and we're just trying to sit in this lee and we're waiting for the lads and I don't know if you can see them but they're way back there so they're probably still uh, still fighting their way through the worst of it we're just gonna sit here and watch them paddle and just make sure they get through you know in case they capsize at least we're we can see them give them a little break here and then we'll push on i'm assuming we're going to see a very similar situation on clyde gale all right so we're in the very south end of penn wind is still present but not as bad just passing this little cute little island with one lone tree and we're headed off in this direction to the portage Okay, so we're approaching the falls at the end of Penn Lake. We've never been here before. I'm assuming the portage is somewhere here on the right. Uh, we can see a bit of the falls. And we're starting to run into some fishermen. Good, how are you? I heard you're catching them every cast. Okay, we're on the 275 from Penn to Clydegale around this nice little falls. Two gentlemen were fishing at the bottom there, which is unfortunate because we didn't want to after we saw them. And it seemed to be a bit of a honey hole. Watched them catch a couple. Fishing look good. So that's looking into Clyde Gale Lake at the end of the 275. And this is what you're bypassing. Uh, 
swing over shore, get in the lee, and take a look and see where these guys are. Okay. No sense getting too far ahead. We're just pulling into this lee here because we're gonna pull in somewhere, and uh, that tiny red dot way back there is the boys. So we didn't want to swing the corner and uh, you know tuck in somewhere with them not having a map. How was that paddle, boys? It was a tough one. Better than the last. I think it was gusty, but it wasn't as gusty as Penn. <laughs> Waves were big, though. Yeah, he's got to be it because he's getting his head mount out. You can see his bald head glistening in the sun. We are at the campsite on the island in the south end of Clydegale, and no one is home. We waited for the boys. Got this cool little island out front, but I don't think you can get between them. But we are home for the night. This is a gorgeous beach. Did it. That's a nice view. probably go there instead of crashing into the boat but so there's the access down to the lake and there's a gorgeous fire pit oh, all built up block the wind and the wind is currently coming in this direction so that should keep the bugs down and we got some options there's a spot to sit over there benches nice little table set up here lots of mature trees we got four hammocks to go up so that's always a risk uh, depending on where you go and I think this will be perfect and it's only two o'clock so we have a new system on our trip this year <laughs> Ryan and Rich are in control of dinners every night and Dan and I are in control of breakfast Boy. and uh, this is gonna be quite the feast so we got some mushroom skewers, pepper skewers, pork tenderloin skewers, twice baked potatoes. Excellent job, <laughs> Richard. Thanks, buddy. Well, this plan backfired. It's Ryan's birthday, stopped at Metro, and uh, they didn't quite make it in. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ryan. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. What are you, 18? Hope you enjoy those absolutely smash cupcakes. Happy 30th, Ryan. Woohoo. I'm old now. True single malt and maps fashion. We're making the new guy hang the bear bags while we all stand around and judge him. <laughs> Cozy's doing a good job. He's already got one hung, and it's nice too. I'll take a look. size rock good knot the form was impeccable maybe a tad close to the tree but who's judging ready born ready ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. would you figure if you caught it we wouldn't notice did you notice there we go perfect Dan Cozy, yeah. Ooh, how do you feel about your double bear bag hang here? Well, the first one went flawlessly, the second one uh, didn't give it enough oomph, so I had to... Uh, <laughs> little adversity? I'll try again. Pressure was on, but I prevailed. You yeah. know? That'll be perfect. It's a great way to stay in shape. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are never going to believe this, but it happened again. Evan the Master Fisherman has snagged his second clam of his fishing career. It's a big one. You got her full, full bud. You can't even get the hook out, you got her so good. Dan Cozy. Yes, sir. On behalf of Single Malton Maps, welcome to the team, brother. Oh, wow. 
Brand new Tukes for 2022. Truly an honor. Thanks for having me out, boys. stuff loaded up in his truck. Whoa! I never wanna feel that freedom people say they find. Guess the Bluetooth just kicked in. Uh, we're going with Rich. Double camera action. Um yeah, it's like some tunes. <laughs> Disclaimer, Rich is one of them flat earthers. <laughs> if you believe in such a thing. Kebabs, some uh, waste baked potatoes. You're probably not going to be able to hear any of this over the wind, but at least you're getting to see my beautiful face. GoPro stop recording. GoPro stop. I don't know if this one's got voice. Ooh, did it shut off? I didn't hear it. GoPro turn off. Oh, I think it turned off the voice. Hey, well, this is the new camera.